Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais in Ontario, Canada, with episode number 13 of the Yacking Podcast. Uh, we talk about life, business, and more, and we bring you tips and ideas for a changing world. We have another interesting guest for you today, but first I'd like to welcome my co-host Kathleen and hand over to her to introduce our guest. Hi, Kathleen. Over to you. Hello, Peter, and welcome, everyone. It's always great to have you with us. Thanks so much for tuning in. Yes, we do have a special guest today. His name is Gary Jones. And um, actually, Gary, I'm going to hand it off to you to tell our viewers and listeners um, what you do. Might be shorter to say what I don't do these days. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I've got a good background over the years. Um, right now, I'm currently building a, a significant team with a particular network marketing company. But I've had over 30 years of experience in home-based business. Uh, I've been consulting to some uh, American corporations coming up to Canada over the years. I actually owned a small network marketing, well, small 8,000 people on databank back before Facebook and Back when we used to write everything on a triplicate paper and fax things in, and my phone bills were like 36 cents a minute to call from Brockville to Toronto back in the old days. Whole different world back then. My actual career background is in um, community development with uh, Ministry of Health when they were closing a lot of the Schedule One institutions in Ontario for people that had special needs and adults that were living in institutions for most of their life. I was what's called a adult protective service worker. I sat in all the planning and the case conferences to make sure the persons that were moving, they were uh, well uh, planned out and they had the right supports and right funding to make sure they could survive after living in an institution environment and going in. And those transferable skills have come in handy in many ways. And uh, after I finished York University in psychology with a bunch of courses in education, I moved into community and social services ministry where I was working with group homes. And we had an interesting group home I'll take two seconds with the, there was a Thistletown Regional Center. We had uh, two group homes where the most aggressive male adolescents in Ontario were, and I was trained in martial arts. Uh, we started shifts with, with, with some blocks and some stretches and all that. And when the young guys first came to us. I mean, it was four guys my size on the shift with five uh, adolescents. And uh, we did all kinds of behavior mod tracking and all that. And when we came to us, there was a fence in the backyard so they couldn't run off the property and everything else. Fast forward with all our interventions, uh, a year later, we could actually walk off to the mall across the street, have an ice cream, sit in the cafeteria, and most times successful, sometimes they'd come back early. But we went right from kids that no one in the province, they were all hot potatoes at Queen's Park with the opposition. How come, blah, 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 someone's in Penetang, all built up in straight jackets. So high profile, very, very interesting kind of stuff you do for five, six years, and then you got to move on because it's just so, it's a burn, to be honest yeah. with you. But uh, that's sort of the background. And interesting enough, all those transferable skills uh, have come in very handy and when I do business consultation and come in very handy when I'm working with new people in a home-based industry. And, you know, that, uh, that's a segue up to it. Originally from Montreal, for those concerned. Montreal Canadiens fan, go, go Abs. And, uh, you know, I went through the Sage Up system there in high school. I was just on a podcast earlier today. We were talking about childhood uh, experiences where the, the guidance counselor in grade nine told my family I'd never finish high school because my math scores are bad story but i got to walk back with my degree and slam on our table but that's for another day <laughs> <laughs> so gary what motivated you to um get started in network marketing what was it that attracted you to the type that type of business my first my first uh involvement in the industry i was actually in a very prestigious i guess the word very high profile job with the ministry of health i was often keynote speaker at some of the conferences and I worked with a lot of community groups and, you know, kind of established myself. But then as a side gig, I decided it'd be nice to do something for some tax breaks. I had no tax breaks as an employee, government employee, not a single tax break. Um, I had a, a company car as part of my perks, but no write-offs there. And someone gave me a little speech about, you know, you get involved, you get tax breaks, return, and, you know, if you get an extra 1800 bucks back in your taxes next year, what would you do with it? And it got me thinking that, having a career path was something interesting enough around that time too, there was a lot of cutbacks in the government and 
in the 80s and uh, I had no idea if my program would be there once everybody was established if they're going to cut it out or whatever and they eventually did cut it out but I got to the point with a home-based business I was making more money than my salary and you know for the hours I was working part-time at one and making the same amount of money on a part-time basis and my wife had a good secure job teaching as a professor at St. Lawrence College. So we had the medical plan, the dental plan, all that stuff through her. And it just made sense to move on from the career path I was on and get into the, uh, the home-based business world and learn about it. And uh, I was with the company for quite a while. The owner was going to shut it down. So myself and two other reps bought the company and ran it for a while. So I learned the corporate side. It goes, it goes on and on. But... What originally got me in there was uh, tax breaks, you know, didn't have any tax breaks. And I think anyone who's got a career in a factory or Tim Hortons or teaching or whatever, if they heard the same thing I heard, they'd probably think twice about it. Yeah, and then this day and age, they must think twice about it. Wow. So, <clears throat> Gary, I, I, from little chats we've had before, I know you've been involved in a couple of different network marketing companies. And for mm -hmm. the last quite a while now you've been selling or distributing essential oils which is quite fascinating as a subject on its own I know what drew you to that particular type of business uh, that's an interesting story as with a previous company that we're selling things like shakes and um, some supplements and things like that a really good company every ducks in a row and the ownership was phenomenal the training was phenomenal everything had all the tick marks are there but the owners of the company basically were consulting to other people in the company I'm now with, and full disclosure, I'm with Young Living Essential Oils. And uh, they felt bad because no one within their own construct were making the kind of money that was in a more established company. So we started getting these cryptic emails about, oh, big things happening and blah, blah, blah. And if you got a ticket for convention, it'd be good for such and such a weekend. So, um, you know, I Googled a little bit and found out what companies were having conventions on that weekend and figure out what's going on. And I said to my wife, I said, essential oils, you know, big guy like me, it's kind of a girly thing. And I, <laughs> there's absolutely no way. And I thought, gee, I worked all this time and it's been shot in the foot. And so I got on the phone, I called, I think 20 of my friends that were not necessarily business associates. And I said, what do you know about essential oils? And 18 of them in some way, shape or form, use a peppermint to keep the bugs off the porch, uh, enhancing some cooking, uh, sleeping better with a diffuser. I went, if I told those 20 people about shakes and the, the supplements I was promoting, I don't think I'd get 18. I'd be lucky to get six of those people that would be interested mm -hmm. in the, the product line. So I thought, well, maybe I'm on to something. And quite honestly, uh, guys, it's probably the best thing that's ever happened because where I had this knee-jerk reaction to essential oils, that's just a part of the big picture. And uh, the supplements and the the, the the whole line of products for children and pets and, and the international market. Uh, I said to somebody, I was with a company, I was like playing ball hockey on the street. And the next day you wake up and you're playing in the Maple Leaf Gardens because you go from a company that's in two countries with six, seven products to a company that... It's, uh, I think, 820 products now. We've got 20 warehouses around the world. It was just mind-blowing. It was the best thing that ever happened. All the other previous involvements I had to, to what's on the table now for me. So the, I'm. it's very easy for me to take background and all my experiences and the different careers and stuff I had. They're all transferable skills to just help somebody move ahead with what I'm doing. So, so Gary, you're good at networking. Um, I met you through networking uh, and social media. So what tips would you have for our viewers and listeners? Oh boy, what tips would I have? I don't know, just you gotta be authentic. You gotta be yourself. Uh, you gotta appreciate that not everyone's gonna see what you see. I know a number of people who have preconceived ideas about the industry I'm in and uh, you know, they're being polite and they're nodding their head, but it's almost like the devil and angel. And they're like, oh, here he goes with one of those pyramid things. Oh, my friend lost his shirt. My so-and-so has a whole bunch of blah, blah in the garage. You know, all these kind of perceptions. That, that oh, you're right. There is a stigma. And I actually yeah. ask you about that because yeah. I know that you love your business. You, yeah, you absolutely do. love network marketing and you've been a network marketer for many, many years. And I'm sure that you've been you know, had pushback from people because of that stigma. So how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you, 
what is your comeback when people say, oh, it's, it's a pyramid scheme? Because it's almost insulting, isn't it? it I, don't, no, I, I don't think I've ever found it insulting. I mean, there's some people that could be pretty brutal. I had a gentleman a couple of years ago give me something and it just walked away and sucked all the energy out of me. Because he had a really good job, management. He didn't need secondary income. He didn't need tax breaks. All the stuff I was putting on the table he didn't have. And uh, I just had to suck it up, get a second one, go back at it. Uh, he was working for a big company. I think you've heard of a company called Sears. <laughs> so what ended up happening is, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, I tried to contact him later to have a, a fresh chat and uh, his uh, phone's disconnected. So I don't know what happened there. But the pushback I get, I just have to appreciate that maybe before I knew what was going on, I probably had the same perceptions and I, probably the older I get, the more tolerant I get. But uh, um, sometimes it's just unlearning something, you know, like, and, and what's happening now with the world we're in, mm -hmm. I had those perceptions. Those perceptions don't work anymore. They have to go back and, and think of fresh ways of conducting themselves, fresh ways of making a, a learning. I just, someone joined my team today, um, have a number of people, uh, you may know some of them, who just buy once or twice a year and they're happy. So there's no pushback. They don't have to go on monthly plans. They don't have to, you know, talk to their friends. They don't have to sell. I, for the word sell never comes out of my lips because I just basically promote the opportunity to buy at wholesale. And they sign up and they buy from the company and all that. But you know, it's, it's very easy. I actually have a PowerPoint I use with new uh, team members. I've taught myself to do Zoom. And Peter, you've been helpful getting my my YouTube channel up where I'm posting some of these things. So if somebody wants to find a 20 minute tutorial on how to handle objections, it's all laid out with PowerPoint and stuff for them. But people have objections to time. I don't have time. I don't have money. I don't have this. I don't have that. And, and sometimes that's fine. That's where they are. And uh, you're sorting. You know? And both of you and your endeavors, I'm sure you talk to a hundred people, maybe five and 10 of them are candidates for what you do, but they might know somebody. It's, it's all part of the big picture. Sure. Which is, again, the importance of networking. It may not be the person that you're connecting with directly that particular day, but it might be somebody that they know. Right? Yeah, most, most of my income right now don't, doesn't come from the people I personally enrolled, but the ones they enrolled and I work with on the second level. Okay. They, somebody edified me and said, you know, Gary's got a teaching background. And I like the way he talks. And when someone validates that you're a good guy sort of thing and you have the right intentions, uh, the person that you, it's a stranger who becomes a business partner uh, will listen to you differently. And Absolutely. Everything. So I, I, I based on when I network, I'm looking for people who will refer to me, not necessarily people. I meet people in other companies that say, well, Gary, uh, I got three friends that just don't like what I'm doing. Why don't you call them? And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I, most of my income comes from the second level of that team building aspect. And I think the fact that you're with us on this uh, video interview, Zoom interview today is, is uh, proof of what you're talking about. I met Kathleen at a networking event four or five years ago. Uh, then we, Kathleen took a table at Mo Mondays and then you would join us at the Mo Mondays table at that, that yeah. event. And you and I got talking and then we did a little bit of business together. And now we three of us are on here and it's all from reaching out and making those contacts. So yeah, there's proof for you. Gary, I, there's a, we've got a couple more things. We've got to pick your brains here. Um, before I get on to something about ideas for people, quick one with what's happening now and the pro the probability that when things get back, they won't get back to normal to a sort of normal, um, what big changes is, is that going to force on people in your industry, do you see? That's a pretty loaded question. The fellow I work with, uh, Adam Green, he's quite well known in the industry. He's living the top rank and all that good stuff. Um, 30 years old, and he does a training every Tuesday night. And every training, he says, pivot, word pivot. Mm -hmm. You walk down the street and you see some doggy doo doo on there, you pivot around it. You don't. Try run away, freak out, you just basically pivot and keep going. So I love the word pivot. And uh, when you pivot something, you're not really coming from fear. You're basically coming from, you know, let's get around and move ahead sort of thing. What, what do I need to do? Do I have to cross the street? Do I have to, whatever. So we're really talking about pivoting. So when things get back to, I don't like the term new normal, but when it comes back to whatever that's going to be, uh, I think more and more people are going to be 
cautious. Uh, my wife and I lived through the ice storm back in what was 98, I think, back in Eastern Ontario and Quebec, all the tower lines came down. And the old Boy Scout in me was embarrassed because I had an eighth of a tank of gas in the car. I had no matches, had candles and no matches because, you know, it, just, it was ridiculous. We had, didn't check the batteries on our flashlights and when the power and, and the hot water and everything stopped, we had to go live at a friend's house and live up there in the country with a wind stove. And I said, I'm never getting caught with that again. So in the winter, I'd never go below half a tank of gas and all that. In the same mindset, there are people, uh, I just talked to a lady who works at Staples and she had half hours and now she's been totally out of hours. She's not, no, no plan B, no backup. So there's a lot of people who are going to say, I'm not getting caught with my pants down again if this happens mm. or something like it happens. So how it's going to change, Peter, in regards to your question, I think people are going to be more open to saying, some of those convictions and things I have, uh, you know, maybe I've got to revisit them. You know, I have a friend from high school who had a girlfriend in high school and she cheated on and she had red hair. And he says, I'll never date a redhead again. I don't know. I don't know how well that serves him, but, uh, you know, uh, we had a little joke one time about dating somebody. I asked him if she dyed her hair and he, he panicked for a second. <laughs> you know, but the interesting, the interesting thing is when this comes out, people are going to say, you know, I need, I need a secondary income. I need some tax breaks. I need to conduct myself differently. The big push on my company right now is building your immune system, which unfortunately the health authorities are not spending a lot of energy on. Sure, sure. Lots sure. of ways you can build your immune system through diet and, you know, better air, better water, uh, supplements and all that. These people, not the um, medical person anyway, but the people who are often dying from this terrible thing happening um, have underlying health conditions. So Absolutely. Why, I think the network marketing industry are doing a better job because there's probably 1,200 companies functioning in Canada and a lot of them are health-based and a lot of them are saying build your vitamins. You know, some not as well as others, but I'm luckily with a company that their whole mission statement is to have healthy families and get rid of toxicity in the house. So how it's going to change, I think people are going to be more willing to look at documentaries and learn about the toxicity in their shampoo and learn about whatever whatever's out there, um, you know, that they could just have a more prosperous, uh, healthy family. And they're going to be more open to research and, and not only research, but act upon it. So right now, the network marketing industry is booming. Like, as I've been going, this is one industry that's pretty well bulletproof. Our yeah. company did, in March, I think our company worldwide did 88% growth in sales. 88%. Wow. In you know, name, name any traditional company that can say they had a 20% growth in a good yeah. month. Yeah. So I think in answer to your question, there's going to be people saying, this is how I'm going to brand myself. Part of me is going to be, I do this, I go to church, I have a grandchildren and that, and I have a home-based business. Yep. Yeah. Because I think just my thoughts are when it gets back to whatever it's going to settle down to, a lot of people's work will be different to what it was before. Maybe still working from home, maybe working shorter hours, maybe splitting jobs. Um, there's talk about repatriating jobs from overseas. All these things are going to bring huge changes. And I, I agree with you. It, it has to have opportunities for home-based business. Yeah, interesting. When, when you go to a financial planner, they make a portfolio for you, right? Because some of them are high risk, some are low risk, some are this, some are that. You don't have all your investments in one thing. Right. Here's right. an interesting thing could be another discussion, but all the pension plans in Canada right now have an anchor that's bank shares. That's their, their go-to, make sure yep. the pension plans are solid. Um, I was on a Zoom with someone recently who was saying that with all the buyouts and forgetting mortgages, although you know I don't want to get into all the banking stuff, but um, the bank shares could drop dramatically, which affects pension plans, which means the government is going to have to boost their pension plans. Yep. No one's talking on that level because we're no. focused on thing so what happens people are going to say i can't wait for the government i can't wait for my pension plan i can't wait for that i have to empower myself i have to surround myself with a team of people that were like-minded and get going so i think all the stuff you just said here it's going to happen with hours and shifting but what you guys are doing here is all over the internet for people doing uh training and recruitment and sure. Community groups. The team I'm with had a movie night last Friday where there was something like 82 people watched a movie. They they streamed it simultaneously, and it just they had popcorn and the thing. You know, it, it's a whole different mindset. Lovely. But what you're doing here, a lot of people are doing that to monetize a second business of some sort. Sure, sure, sure. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I've got one for you. We still got a bit of time. Um, 
looking back on your life, and you've been really successful in a couple of different uh, careers, uh, several, in fact, for, for youngsters who, who are sitting there wondering, people who've maybe just finished university and their first job and now their job stopped, what advice would you give those people, young, young people? All they can see is disruption in front of them. What, what would you say to them? Well, the last convention I went to in Salt Lake City, I would say of the 40,000 people, at least half of them were under 30, uh, under 35. Yeah. A lot of them were starting families. There was a lot of people there that were school teachers, and when they had their own kids, they said, why am I paying for private school when I'm a teacher? And they left their teaching job because they leveraged their residual income to the point where it was safe to do. So there's a lot of people of probably the age group you're talking with, Peter. I don't think the people graduating from college university, and again, my wife's a college prof, we talk about this. Um, she, I don't think a lot of them have the same goals. They don't want a backyard. They don't want to... No story town has they want experiences they want to travel and with the industry i'm in you can write off a lot of that if you go to sure. see vancouver and stuff there's tax breaks so a lot of them are attracted to being empowered and not having a boss and you know some old 55 year old guy telling them what to do <laughs> all that kind of kind of different i mean uh, there's an entrepreneurial thing so i it, it'd be interesting to have this conversation a year from now and say what yes. really apart but i think I th if I was a betting man, what I would say is there's going to be a lot more people who are looking at direct sales, affiliate marketing, uh, creative things of finding a, a, a gap somewhere. I mean, uh, Kathleen, you've done that with your business where there's obviously a gap and you found a way. And that's a lot of, a lot of successful business people who so find a gap and fill it and they'll do well. So I think more people in developing apps and getting travel sites and, you know, a friend of mine has a drone and he goes all around the world with his drone with a, uh, what do you call it, GoPro on it. Yeah. And he's trying to market that and, and people are hitting his site and he's getting a, a little kickback from if they buy off a, one of the sites he did, you know. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big question, actually. Interesting. Kathleen, you got anything else you want to ask Gary there? Well, it's. A, um, I was just going to ask you, Gary, if people wanted to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Well, I mean, I just got my domain with my name on it, so something would come down the pipe, but I'm not focused on that at all. I just didn't want someone else to get my domain. So right now, most people are finding me on Facebook, at Gary S. Jones, Gary with one R, Gary S. Jones, Facebook, and um, I've met five or six, I had seven people join my team last month. The best month I've ever had is four and seven last month, and they all found me on Facebook through referrals and third-party referrals. And uh, I, in this day and age, everyone's at home, I, I feel very comfortable just text me, call me. My, my number is 519-716-3592. That's 519-716-3592. Yes, I have a Young Living site, and yes, I have a special email for work and all that, but I don't really like people hitting the site because it's overwhelming for someone who's a newbie. I'd rather talk them through it and say, this is what to expect and all that. But um, maybe someone listening today just wants, maybe they're looking at another company. And, and I have to say, I had a lot of mentors in the 80s and 90s. And when I asked how do I say thank you, they said pass it forward. So if I could be of service to someone just looking at the business and just want to chat on the phone and, in the old days, Kathleen, you know, I used to charge one hug per consultation, but uh, now just a smile is good enough over the <laughs> But if I can help anybody, I, I have a karma. I got to pay it forward because so many people help me get where I am. Oh, you have a big heart, Gary. We all know it. So. Well, you, Thank you. We got a couple of minutes. I'm going to ask you another one, but I just to remind our listeners and viewers, certainly viewers who are watching this on video, you will see that. Uh, contact for Gary Jones at Facebook on the caption and the phone number on the bottom of your screen. And if you're on the podcast, you'll find it on our Podbean podcast platform. Gary, you mentioned something earlier called, you said transferable skills. And it's worked well for you, you were saying, uh, when you transitioned or pivoted, as you said, to your new career. And I think this is something that's going to be even more important in the years ahead for young people who learn one thing for career A, and then an event like this coronavirus comes along and career A is gone, disappeared, and they have to move on to something else. So tell us a little bit more what you, you would suggest to people about learning transferable skills. So I co-host a podcast with Peter Pickett, who's in the financial industry, and we sort of 
bounce off each other. And sometimes you can appreciate this. We have an agenda, and when we were talking, we know we cover the agenda. We get talk, we were talking about Boy Scouts and the most recent one, and how learning in Boy Scouts has got us ready for for where we are now. There's a lot of transferable skills from our family, our church, summer jobs, summer camp, babysitting, cutting lawns. I mean, there's all kinds of things that people don't realize are 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 marketable and, and transferable. So when something happens now, um, people have changed relationships over the years, you know, new girlfriend, new boyfriend, whatever, they've changed cities. And, and every time you do, you need to adapt to that new world. I mean, my wife and I lived in Brockville, I think, for 14 years, and we've been in this area in Cambridge for 20. When we came here, we didn't know anybody. You know, I came for a job that was a, hired to come and help run a company locally, and um, that lasted for a while. And I didn't know anybody. The only people I knew were at work. So I had to find ways to make contacts outside of work. I joined Toastmasters, which I highly recommend to people. Peter, I know you're active with that. You have a background in that, and you meet people. So those pivoting and transferable skills, how do you know that being a babysitter when you're in grade nine, those skills are still transferable to now? Yeah. Skills, compassion, all those things. Yeah. If you were in a, a career with skills, a lot of the career goals – Time management, task analysis, all those things you did. And if you were a repair guy in a Canadian tire uh, garage, those organized and hitting your goals and time and billing, that, that, that's all transferable to being your own boss. Absolutely. Gary, that's, that's really good. Thank you for your good uh, tips and sharing your experience and your contact details. So, People can get hold of you, and that's it for today for another episode. Hey, Peter, can, yeah, sure. I, 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 I promise. I mentioned the podcast to do if I do a little plug. It's called um, "Inspire to Bulletproof Your Life" on Facebook. We have a page, so if people. Some of the stuff you asked me is actually elaborated on that. Inspire, <laughs> bulletproof your life. Inspire. Say that again slowly for me. Inspire. Inspire. Yeah. Proof your life. Inspire to bulletproof your life. We'll put that up for you as well. Sounds good. Gary, thank you very much. And for our, thank you, Kathleen, for our listeners and viewers. That's another episode of the Yacking Podcast, and we'll be back in a couple of days with the next episode. Thank you both. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.